Good morning, free thinkers. I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about being a widower. Do you know any widowers? I've worked with a lot of people in my career, and when I made the move to working exclusively with men, widowers were part of that demographic. And I want to tell you something about widowers, a usually overlooked demographic. A lot of attention goes to widows, and a lot of people forget the widower. Let's talk about the widower today. I've worked with widowers of many ages, men who were married a few years, men who were married over 50 years, young men, older men, and what can we learn from the widower, the man who lost his wife? Number one, they're not trying to replace their wife when they choose to date again. That's one theme that I see over and over. In the same way that divorce men try to replace their wife, that's not happening with widowers. There seems to be a certain type that divorced men will go through or pursue. I don't see that with widowers. They truly revere the memory of their wife and they want to keep it reverent and they want to keep it special. They're not trying to recreate anything. They're not trying to replace her because she is irreplaceable. So when a widower starts to date again in his own time frame, there is no regular time for recovery. He's looking for companionship. He's looking for the feminine healing spirit to help him along. It's the exact opposite of what many young guys will talk about. Like a lot of guys will talk about the destructive feminine. That element does exist. But when it comes to a widower dating again, he's not looking for that. He naturally realizes that the feminine spirit can help him heal as well. And that's what we're looking at. And that's what he's looking to feel again. That's what he's looking to experience again. And it might not even be sex. It might be just the healing element. Going out with a woman for just a cup of coffee with no goal except to sit there with a woman. That can be very therapeutic and healing and comforting for a widower. They have regrets more from what they didn't say to their late wife than what they did say. After working with men since 1986, it's a long time, and also in my trade of cutting hair, you've got to realize I've worked mainly with men. So not only as a therapist, not only in the hair industry, and of course now with coaching, I've worked mainly with men. At this point in my career, I know men pretty well. I've done a lot of listening to all kinds of men. And the biggest regret is what they didn't say. They wish they would have said this. They wish they would have said that. They wish they would have had a certain conversation. And their face changes. You've heard me talk about that. People's faces change when they talk about their regrets. Widowers don't want to stop intimacy just because they're older. It's quite easy to ignore and avoid that. Many times the older women of years past would not date again. They would wear black in mourning. And the widower, the man, 
who still has a little bit of mojo left in him, is not thinking that way. He wants that feminine spirit again to be around him. He wants that softness. And he is willing to explore intimacy, even though he might not be 100% ready for it mentally. He truly, truly wants intimacy. And it could be just holding hands. It could be just snuggling up on the couch. It could be sex. But what he doesn't want to do is put that part of his life to bed. Because there's nothing that can make a man feel alive after having a loss like that than intimacy with a woman. What else do we need to know about widowers? Grieving is an individual process. Every man has his own time frame when it comes to healing. The five stages of grief. Some people talk about there's many stages of grief. I've seen seven, I've seen ten, and Elizabeth Kubler-Ross pretty much set the standard by compartmentalizing all of the various stages. And she talked about the five stages of grief. Denial, which is, wow, I can't believe this just happened. She's not dead. She's going to walk in at any moment. I'm going to get a phone call from her. Like, I can't believe this is happening. Anger. Why did she have to leave? God, why did you do this to me? Bargaining. If I was only better. God, bring her back. Make this go away. Bargaining with life. Depression, sinking into darkness, it's normal, it's natural, and then eventually acceptance. So the man who is grieving goes through these stages at different levels of depth, different levels of frequency. You might cycle through these levels. You might go through five of these things in one day. But there's no time frame for, like, snap out of it. You are in depression too long. You are in anger too long. Every man is different. What you did before, the mindset that a man had before he was married and while he was married, is what helps him recover. For instance, you've heard me say, train yourself to live, not to die. If a man spent 20 years saying, I don't know what I would do without her, I would just die without her, there's a possibility that when she goes, he won't know what to do. He trained himself to die. He trained himself to have confusion. Some of the most successfully grieving men, if there's such a thing as successful grieving, are men who had the talk with their spouse while they were alive. Like, what will happen if you die first? What will happen if I die first? What will your life be like? The life insurance question. The provision question. The dating question. Will you date again after I die? Or if you die, will I date again? It's good to have those conversations before so, for the married folks, I was going to say, what can married men learn from widowed men? That's one of the things right there. Start having the conversations. That way, you have those conversations now, and your unconscious mind starts working on solutions now. Death of a spouse will always be a shock. Always. It will always hurt. It will always be a shock. But how long you stay in the valley of the shadow of death and depression and grieving is up to you and what you do with your mind before there's a death. So if a man is grieving for a year, that could be normal for him. 
If a man is grieving for six months, that could be normal for him. Every man is different. The man's children, if he has children, will always think it's too soon to start dating. Always. I don't know if there is a time frame, but a man instinctively knows after a loss of a wife, he will instinctively know when it's right to seek out the company of a female instinctively. There will be a time when he doesn't want to do that, when the last thing he wants to do is have the company of a female, because he needs his time to grieve, to miss his wife. But the kids will always think it's too soon. I like the idea of friends introducing the widower to ladies. I like that idea. The man will know if it's right or not. And remember, he's not trying to replace his wife. That's super important to remember. Here's another thing. You will play a role. A widower will play a role in console, consoling your children regarding the loss of their mother. Nobody knows their mother the way you did. So not only are you grieving, but you are playing counselor and consoler to your children who may not know how to process this. Death is part of life. And you have the wisdom and the years. And it's a great act of selflessness. It's not, you're not ignoring, you're not living in a fantasy world by moving away from your grief. But there's a time when you have to hold your crap together to help your children come to grips with it. And you will model peace and recovery and acceptance for your children. That doesn't mean you are denying your own pain. That means you are realizing you have a task. And that's one parenting tip that we're never taught, is that someday, someday, the surviving spouse will have to console the children about the loss of their mother or father. It's okay to kiss that picture. I've said that if you're lucky, if you're lucky, if you're fortunate, that after you're gone, somebody will kiss your picture every night before they go to bed, if you're one of the fortunate ones. So it's okay to kiss that picture, hold it close to your chest, and tell your late wife that you love her. It's normal. And it's a way of memorializing her. You might be going through a box of pictures or things or 
literally just seeing her clothing in a closet and just sometimes taking it and, and you get a whiff of her. That's normal. But eventually you'll get to the point where you will have a favorite picture of her and you will hold it close to your chest and you will kiss it and you will say good night honey good morning my dear that's normal and the most important thing this is what I have learned from mature widows over the years it's what I've observed it's what I've heard people say over and over is that after you are in the stage of acceptance you learn to thank the Lord think about this in the beginning there's cursing why was she taken from me and then as that tempers down there's the attitude where you thank the Lord for the time that you did have with your wife for what you did experience and you learn to cherish the memories of the trips waking up together going to bed together and you encapsulate those things. This video is dedicated to all the men, all the widowers that I've worked with over the years. This is for you, gentlemen.